happy Thursday blessings, everyone. Happy Thursday blessings. I am so excited to um, to talk about revival, spiritual growth, and um, the rising tide of evil. Right? <laughs> you guys are probably like, "Wow, there's a heavy topic." Um, yeah, we're going to get into the nitty gritty because we're in a time like I have never seen before, right? Like right now in 2023, I have never seen such rising tide of blatant show of evil. And I want, but I know that we're also seeing um, also some revival and I want all of us to be encouraged and to be um, to be ignited to be a part of God's kingdom agenda right now, right? God's kingdom agenda is always happening, right? And he is always calling out where are the workers, right? You know, there are few, as Jesus said, the harvest, but where are the workers, right? So if you are with me live, let me know, hashtag live, hashtag replay. My name is Leah Mason Virgin. I am your certified Christian business coach, life coach, author, and social selling expert at burstingwithblessings.com. And today we are going to be talking about spiritual growth, nourishment, revival, and how do we be a part of it? How do we be a part of it? Um, how do we look at what's happening? How, how do we navigate um, what I'm seeing in the online space right now and what I'm seeing in the world? How do we be the light? And I'm not going to have all the answers. You guys are probably like, oh my God, then why is she even going live? No, <laughs> because I'm not here to tell you what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Okay. I don't know what the Holy Spirit wants you to do, but I do know how to help you get with the Holy Spirit to figure that out. Okay. Right. Like, and I'm so glad all my friends is here. Hey, hey. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, what your daughter said. Um, so, <clears throat> I want to read. I'm in Proverbs 11. And yesterday when I went live, I was in Isaiah chapter 1. And I really encourage you guys to take a look at that. Um, but I want to read this and, and, and I want you to pause and not let it be like, oh, well, she's like just saying this is bad. No, 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 no. Listen for just a second. Okay. Hang with me. Hang with me. Proverbs chapter 11, verse four, riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. What we're seeing right now more than ever is people in the world who are using demonic forces um, to obtain wealth, right? The world is a broken, sinful place, right? We know that the world clamors for fleshly riches, right? The world is constantly talking to us about wealth and riches in a fleshly sense, right? And God never said that being rich is evil or bad. So, if you grew up in the American Christian church, in some of the churches that I did, it was like poverty mentality is awesome. Um, if you're rich, you're evil. Okay. What we know is that it is the pursuit of riches outside of God's will 
with evil, like evil intent, sinful, don't care how they're going to get it, right? That is what this world is doing right now. Our governments and, you know, all these like Hollywood actresses and actors are literally admitting that when they marry with demonic forces, that they get more money. And what God's word is saying in Isaiah and here in Proverbs is how are you getting your riches? He, he, verse 18, the wicked earns deceptive wages, okay? Deceptive wages. But if you look down here, okay, <laughs> the generous man will prosper, right? He who diligently, Blessings will be on the head of him who sells. Okay? So let's let's make sure we're on the same page. I want you to sell. I want you to be a person who sells the things that God has gifted you with. Okay? So as long as we got that two things going, I want you to prosper in all respects. I want you to flourish. The righteous will flourish like the green leaf. Okay. And even Paul, he was like, you, you better believe that those that serve you deserve their compensation, right? So here's the thing. What are we seeing right now in this world? Like there is a spiritual warfare going on because we have a world that has moved so far away from God and his word and the way he wants selling to be done. The way he wants justice and truth. The way he wants the unborn protected, life protected, him edified and glorified. Right? And we see we see that there are a lot of young people are totally torn. They're like, do I idolize this singer? I'm so empty. We've got, you know, we've got children that are contemplating suicide on a mass level. Like, we have never seen anything like this. Well, except for, I don't know what happened before Noah's time. Not even going to speculate, right? We know it was bad, bad, bad then. <laughs> Right? But we're talking about right now. What is happening right now. And when, when we start talking about revival and what does that look like, and how do we be a part of that, and how do we navigate spiritual growth, right? We have these children that are so in need. They're so empty and starving of spiritual nourishment and of edifying, glorifying, and connecting with their creator, their Abba Father, right? So what, what is missing in our social sphere? What is missing is the word of God is calling out. And I'm not saying that you have to go around on the you know side of the street and like condemn things. And I mean, unless the Holy Spirit is literally calling you to be you know, praying for people on the side of the road. That can be a thing. But I want to encourage us, like, what? Now is the time. You know, God said, who can I send? And I think it was Jeremiah said, send me, Lord. Send me. And we want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, when we kneel before Jesus Christ. But the tide and the pull of this world and the spiritual forces make us feel like we're A, not doing enough if you are doing something. B, it feels so hard to take time for God's word and for prayer and, and, and you know, and to, to, you know, pray over our kids and our spouse and random people and shine the light and we're all like we're all exhausted so how do we nurture ourselves 
and spiritually grow. Well, first off, grace. Okay, first off, grace. In Jesus' name, grace. Now, I know I'm hopping all around a little bit. But I'm going to hop back to two decades ago. I went to Messiah College, which is Messiah University now. And they would have these praise and worship nights on Wednesday nights. And I was so broken. I was so, I was such a traumatized, broken human being. I was desperate for healing. I was desperate to feel loved because I did not know my identity in Jesus Christ. I did not know that I was valuable. I had not done enough, you know, counseling and healing and healing of my trauma and healing so that I could fill myself with the word of God and not feel empty, constantly, desperately seeking. Desperately seeking validation from every outside source. And trust me, I was doing a whole lot of things to get validation in ways I was not supposed to be doing. But I did not have a, a childhood of real spiritual growth, real talk about righteousness. And God's grace and love and my identity and how not staying rooted in the word of God will leave you empty and broken and falling further away from God and the Holy Spirit. I was, there are movies that I have tried to watch now that I watched two decades ago that I was like, hey, this is no big deal, right? And I watch them now and literally my spirit wants to revolt at what I'm seeing. This is the difference. When we have revival, we are acknowledging, yes, Lord, you, you are my guide. I will serve you. I know that you are king and king, Lord of lords. You have forgiven, him, forgiven me. I am marked as Christ Christo, right? But if we do not remain in God's word, firmly rooted in that, and actually writing out God's word, speaking it, believing it, acknowledging and putting that truth, that testimony like I talked about yesterday, over and over, then the pull of the sin and the brokenness of this world will accomplish. It is an undertow like none other. The cursing, the drinking, the pursuit of fleshly pleasures that I did because I didn't know how to make this living and active word a part of my spirit, a part of my truth, a part of my healing of my trauma. We cannot expect these children that are going to these revivals to remain and become mature Christians if we do not teach them these things. If we do not teach them how to write out the word of God and speak it, believe it, proclaim it, and pursue healing, pursue righteousness, sensitize themselves to the Holy Spirit so that when the pull of the world and the world's evil, their spirit goes, no, this is, this is utterly wrong. I, this feels evil. The music that I listened to decades ago, the things that I did, I cannot abide now. The smoking, the cursing, all of that. I literally was exposed to somebody over the last couple of days who literally was cursing every other word. 
It was like every other word. And I could hardly, I could hardly sit there. I was literally clenching my hands. And listen, I don't judge because I was that person. I literally was that person, guys. So hear me. I'm not judging, oh, they're evil, they're bad. I'm judging where they are spiritually because I know what that is. And I still struggle with cursing because that was ingrained in me for decades. I have to rewire my brain. I am sensitizing myself over and over. So we cannot feel like, oh my God, you know, I'm mad at myself or I'm mad at the world. Like, you know, I'm mad at, you know, these kids that are cursing these rap songs, you know, and, and going to these movies and, you know, these parents that are taking their kids to like drag queen shows that are utterly evil. Like, we need massive revival and spiritual growth and the word of God spoken, believed, and repeated every day, no matter our feelings, no matter our thoughts, grapple with the Holy Spirit every day because then we will just fall away into what Satan wants. We cannot be surprised that a mom would plunk her toddler down. It's horrifying. It's horrifying because to me, I'm like, how, how, how could you be so spiritually devoid that you can take your 12-year-old to basically a strip show? But that's where we are in our world. And yes, I hear people saying it's the end times. Look at, you know, could be. Could be. I don't know, but I, I know that we are called to be the light. And some of us are called to be very very forward facing, right? What does that look like for you? Right? I mean, you guys, if you've seen my work, you know what that looks like for me right now. But I know that we have to call it out somehow. We need to be a part of encouraging people to dig deep into scripture, to write it, to speak it, to believe it, to be it. Because the undertow of evil is like so blatant. I literally watched on Instagram people who are excitedly wanting to go see a very big speaker a uh, singer right now and that singer blatantly says that she taps into the demonic realm blatantly puts on idol demonic clothes and we have christians going to her we have Christians that are going to her. And raising up a storm. Whatever demons are dancing on her stage. And they go, oh, it's no big deal. Right? That was my biggest thing when I was like a very young baby Christian. Oh, it's no big deal. I got Christ. It's no big deal. But we have no idea what spiritual forces we'll bring home with us. We have no idea the spiritual impact. We are supposed to be standing apart. A city on the hill shining the light because the darkness is trying to rise. Ninety-four million people Googled John 3.16 when Tim Tebow wrote it on his face. And the sheer fact that 94 million people had no idea what John 3.16, the gospel said, 
hell is us? Now more than ever, God is calling us to be the mighty army with the good news, to shine the light, to start putting John 3.16, put it out there, put it out there, put it out there, guys. You don't have to call out the tarot card readers or the singer with her demonic clothes and her worship of demons. Like, you don't have to do that if that's not where you're at right now. But I am encouraging all of us to think and to pray, to, to really get the gospel out there because God said in Psalm 68, verse 13, complete Jewish Bible version, Adonai gives the command, the women with the good news are a mighty army. And I believe this now more than ever. We can be a part of creating the ripples of revival. We can be a part of shining the light and letting the Holy Spirit chasten some people from their crystals, their, what do you call that, smudgy, burny, evil stuff. I mean, the new age, the demonic, every bit of everything that is rising right now is never more powerful than God, is never more powerful than God's word. And I know, I know that God wants us to prosper in all respects. And I know that spiritual growth and revival, well, sage, Lauren's like, it's sage, Leah. <laughs> yeah. Like I walked into a shop the other day, this cute little boutique shop, with my daughter and I looked over and I just literally my entire spirit vibrated back from the crystals, the little smudgy stuff. Thankfully I didn't see tarot cards there. I would have like literally lost my mind. But I have seen, I've, it, I saw someone who I thought was a Christian start saying she's pulling cards. I'm like, what the? You are literally inviting demonic forces into your home and into your children's lives. People want to like this moon crap. I'm just like, it's an abomination unto the Lord. And I do think we need to be a stronger voice crying out in the wilderness make way for the Lord make way for the Lord because he's coming back and I often don't really like talking about spiritual warfare but I think now more than ever people are feeling it they're seeing it and I really think that American Christian women are finally on the precipice of ready to talk about spiritual warfare. I would have said 10 years ago that the mass majority of Christian women would be, oh, well, that's not really a thing. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, this is uncomfortable. Um, and that was me, you know, 10 and a half years ago before I really came to Christ in a very practical, discernible way, not just saved. I finally got it. I'm still getting it. Don't worry, ladies. I didn't just proclaim I, I've, God has perfected me. <laughs> Y'all know he hasn't. Um, I'm 
I just want to be an encourager to each and every one of us to be bolder, to be a bolder light, to be ready for what could happen. We here in American Christian culture have no idea what persecution is. We have no clue. And uh, I know I live a bubble in a bubble. <laughs> I know it. I mean, I've hardly, hardly ever gotten much, you know, nastiness or anything like that on any of my posts and, or experienced much. Some. Oh, I just want to talk about this forever and ever right now. I just want to keep going. And that's like we're 25 minutes in and I'm sorry, ladies. There's so much on my heart. Like I just, I feel it. I feel it in the air. And I, and I wish that I had started this journey two decades ago started writing about God two decades ago when he had called me. I said no. I was disobedient. <laughs> I was very disobedient um, to God for a long, long time. And I just want to encourage you guys, no matter what you see in the online space, no matter if you get discouraged, other people's obedience does not negate your obedience to God's calling on your life. I have to remind myself like that when I look at other people's profiles and I'm like, oh, they have like 100,000 followers. Who cares? We are to be obedient to do that which God has called us to do, no matter the outcomes. The outcome is in his hands. The outcomes of whatever is happening in that revival at Asbury College or whatever they're feeling there, it is simply our calling to shine the light, keep having the conversation, keep posting, keep praying, stay vigilant. Literally on my biblical vision board, I have an area where I pray for the persecuted Christians of this world and to all the spokespeople who speak for God in accordance with his word. And I pray for revival every day. That is definitely a small piece that we can do to be a part of revival, to be a part of encouraging spiritual growth, to be a part of um, encouraging people to really think um, when they feel like they should, you know, start dabbling in new age stuff or this manifestation junk or tarot cards. Like we're to be the light to keep encouraging, right? And we are also to have the real and raw conversations about our own spiritual journey. Here's the thing that I know is going to happen with these students after revival is that they are going to walk away and they're going to be like, man, these feelings dissipate so quickly. My motivation, my feeling connected to God is going to dissipate and it dissipated and why? I, now I don't feel filled with the Holy Spirit, right? We have to encourage them that our feelings, literally, I love the chosen. They had uh, the actor, um, you know, the actor Jesus guy. Um, one of the disciples was like, I don't feel any different. He's like, I don't need you to feel anything to do what I'm asking you to do. And I was like, boom, amen, right there. I don't have to feel like following God's righteous plan right now to do what God has called me to do today. I cannot tell you how often I have to say that to myself. It is my act of worship and obedience to walk out my calling day by day, no matter if I'm seeing the fruits of my labor or feeling like it. And trust me, there are so many days I'm like, I, I am I, do I make a difference? Does anything that I do matter today? I don't feel like I matter. Like what I do matters. A lot of days. But God said, 
He who sows righteousness gets a true reward. That which you put in heaven will be on earth. And if at minimum it's only on earth in your own heart, if if you just have to tell yourself, I'm changing me today, then say that and do it. Do the high calling in Christ Jesus. Can you tell me many times I've looked at that verse, Lord, help me not grow weary. Reinvigorate me. Help me run the race. This four years has been so hard. And I've made it harder. By struggling with my calling, my faith, my ability to persevere and endure. And you guys know, hashtag real and raw, I never lie to you guys. I have never said it is so easy to build a business in the online space. Just give yourself six months. Tick tock. Now you got 10K months. But I know this. I will kneel before him and I'll say, Lord, I screwed up a ton. But I did keep striving to serve you, edify you, and be a part of the change that this world so desperately needs. It is desperate for righteousness, salvation, and to understand that sin and evil Bring brokenness, pain, and yes, judgment by Abba Father if we do not have Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we humbly come before you with praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that we have such easy access to your scripture. My God, like none other time do we have such easy access to your scripture, and yet this world rolls and boils with spiritual warfare. Jesus, we humbly submit ourselves for your transformation and change. Lord God, chasten us and show us what we need to cut off, where we need to be bolder, where we need to persevere, endure, cultivate the fruits of the Spirit. Lord Jesus, imprint your holy word upon our hearts and minds so that when we come under attack, when we feel the undertow of the world pulling at us to fall away from righteousness and the high calling, that we can rebuke it and say, no, God's word says, I am the righteous and I will proclaim the good news because I am the mighty army that God has called. Help us, Lord, to shine your light, to spread your word, to be your hands and feet, to call out sin in a way that edifies you, Lord, because it is a fine line. It's a fine line. We don't want to push people away from you, Lord, but we also don't want to be a part of those you stand idly by while others are sucked in deeper and deeper into the occult and deeper into sin and brokenness. Help us, Lord, 
to continue to pray, meditate, sensitize our spirits to you, and to be obedient when you say go live, when you say post this, when you say pray for this person. Let us do it instantly, 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 Lord. You know, Lord, there is often times where I go, are you sure you want me to pray for them right now? Are you sure you want me to reach out to them right now? Lord, we are, we are Peter. We're running out on the water. Then we're looking around. <laughs> but we are here and we are saying, call us. We are the workers ready for the harvest. Teach us how to be obedient to you. Teach us how we are to work for you. Teach us how to uniquely do that which you have called us to do, Lord. Protect us from the enemy. Protect us from spiritual warfare. Rebuke the enemy far away from us and encourage us day by day. Let us not grow weary in doing good. Let us keep persevering for the high calling in Christ Jesus. We pray for revival throughout the world. We pray for revival in every Christian heart across the world. We pray, Lord, for more people to stand against injustice, to stand against the sin that's rising, to stand up and say, no, that is sin, that is evil, and that will not be a part of my life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray for each and every one of us, Lord. I, I pray for protection over families and provision. No, it's not easy being a Christian, but God, thank you for removing the veil from our eyes, for giving us a heart of flesh, for teaching us how to put our hand to the plow, for calling us, for gifting us, we are the women, the mighty army with the good news. I am so excited to see what will happen in this time. And yes, Lord, there is also fear there. I am a little fearful of what is happening in this world like I have never seen before. A world that does not know goodness versus evil. A world that is calling evil good and good evil. Send me, however scary that is, when I say it sometimes, Lord. Keep the sensitizing our spirits to discern right from wrong, to discern evil, to discern how to speak, when to speak, and what to say. Holy Spirit, speak through us. Thank you, Jesus. Please remove any of my words that are not in accordance with your will and way. And leave only that which you want remembered to be remembered. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo! Ladies, we knew. We knew today. You knew I was going to cry again today. Cried yesterday. Going to cry again today. Going to cry again tomorrow. <laughs> Woo! Ladies, bring it. Bring it, ladies. Get out there. Post John 316. Get it posted. Let's do it. Let's go post. Or post whatever God is calling you to. I, I, I just... I just want to... Speak the name of Jesus. Over everything. And everyone. Until healing. Revival. Salvation spreads across the earth. That all should come to know him and that none should perish. And we shall see what will happen this year and the next. And I am delighted that I get the privilege and the honor of praying with you guys, sharing time, Encouraging in you the high calling in Christ Jesus. Whatever he is calling you to write, speak, do, create with him. 
gosh, I'm so excited to see what you guys create this year. So excited to hear what God does in your lives. And I will see you tomorrow. Amen, amen.